Welcome back, scholars. This video is going to look in depth at the characteristics of central angles and inscribed angles, two of the concepts introduced in our previous lesson looking at circles. Let's get started. To recap from last time, we saw that a central angle is an angle in a circle whose vertex is on the center of the circle. The central angle shown in this figure measures 50 degrees. I'm going to label the points where the angle intercepts the circle itself as A and B. In doing so, I have created a minor arc AB, which is labeled in blue. I have also created a major arc AB, labeled in green. We also saw last time that a circle could contain one or more inscribed angles. An inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle itself, not on the center. So, to summarize, circle A on the far left contains a central angle, labeled as the red, 2x. It also contains an inscribed angle, whose vertex is located on the circle, which is labeled in orange as x degrees. We have several ways of describing the arc intercepted by a central or an inscribed angle. We can describe it using a measure, such as degrees, or by using a length, which is a fraction of the circle's circumference. For now, let's keep our focus on finding an arc's measure. In the case of a central angle, the concept is very simple. If an arc is intercepted by a central angle, the arc's measure is equal to the measure of the central angle. So if angle A, M, B is 60 degrees, then arc A, B is also 60 degrees. What about inscribed angles? Well, let's see if we can discover the measure of an arc intercepted by an inscribed angle. Let's start by analyzing the figure that's given. We have an angle A, C, B, which is an inscribed angle. We also have, labeled in green, an intercepted arc, AB. Ultimately, we would like to know the measure of arc AB. You may also notice this angle alpha with its vertex at the center of the circle. That is a central angle. Let's see how many other features we can label. We have several radii here, AQ, QC, and QB are all one radius length, so that makes them each congruent to one another. We could even say that AC is a diameter. Now that I've labeled those congruent radii, remember from our ankle puzzles that we've discovered an isosceles triangle here. That means that we have two congruent angles, which will be angle QBC and angle QCB. Now, we'll need to dig way back to seventh grade math. The triangle exterior angle theorem tells us that the sum of any two angles in a triangle equals the measure of their remote exterior angle. So let's translate that to our example. In this case, our two congruent angles in our isosceles triangle will sum up to equal the remote exterior angle, which happens to be angle alpha. This is big news. If these two congruent angles add up to alpha, that means individually each of these angles will be just one half of angle alpha. Let's recap. We already knew that the measure of arc AB is equal to the measure of central angle alpha. But what if we think of arc AB as an arc intercepted by an inscribed angle? This inscribed angle is the same angle in our isosceles triangle. And we just saw that this angle is half of the central angle alpha. To generalize, this is called the inscribed angles theorem. Once again, it states that the measure of an inscribed angle will be half the measure of the arc that angle intercepts. This property holds for all possible cases. When that inscribed angle passes through the center of the circle, when the center of the circle rests inside the inscribed angle, and when the center of the circle rests outside the inscribed angle. That wraps up our introduction to central angles and inscribed angles. In our next video, we will look at inscribed polygons and puzzles involving inscribed angles. Thanks for watching.